know, the purpose this afternoon or this morning is to go ahead and take a look at the sales logist web plane and the dashboard and widget functionality within there. You can log into this demo version of SalesLogic. It's the out-of-the-box web client, fully functional that Sage hosts. Um, if you ever want to play around with it, get an idea. Maybe you're like, oh, I wonder how that particular functionality works in the web client. You can just log on independently and play around with that. But basically, when you log into SalesLogic, uh, similarly to the LAN client that you're used to, you've got your left menu over here with all your different entities, accounts, contacts, opportunities. And then it comes up into a dashboard area, similar to if you have your sales dashboard and sales logic. Um, the one nice feature that we're going to talk about today is with this dashboard, you may just kind of see it and see, okay, I see I've got a welcome screen. I can see my activities for today and recently viewed. Um, but what's nice about this is you're also able to modify this to um, whatever information you might want to see. And that's been one of the big requests from you know from users of sales logic is I need to I really want to see graphically uh, representations of my data without having to go through and do a report without having to you know uh, engage ISM to create some functionality on the screen or whatever. Uh, this is a way that users can independently go in and create the information that they want to see in whatever format works for them. So as we look at um, this dashboard screen that comes up, you'll, you'll notice that there's an X on each of these widgets here. So you're able to simply just close those. It may be that you don't care to see this welcome to sell logic after a while. You can just X that, and then it's gone from your particular screen. And that's on a user by user basis. So each user can configure this um, how they'd like. In this case, the administrator has disabled the ability to delete that. Um, with this, so basically what they've done is they said that this dashboard screen is, is basically locked. Very similar to when you create a group in sales logic so you can share it with other people, but you can't actually modify that shared one. You can create your own local copy, and then you can make your changes to it. So it's just prompting us here. Do you want to make a, a personal copy of this page? And I'm just going to say no because we really don't uh, care in this case. So. As I see on here, some of the default ones are the recently viewed accounts. And then there's just a hyperlink, so I can click right onto Abbott Limited if I wanted to jump back in there and bring up the account detail screen for Abbott Limited. And again, just as an overview to the web client itself, it's a, it's a very similar layout to sales logics on the network client. You've got your top detail section. You've got a middle pane area where you can drag a tab, all the tickets, for example. And I'll drag that tab into the middle pane, just like you can do on the standard client. One thing you can do in the web client is you can actually drag more than one tab. So I could drag tab after tab after tab and just keep scrolling down um, if that's something that you would want to do. I'm going to go ahead and take that back down just because I'm, I'm running this at a little lower resolution than I normally do so that it displays well on the meeting. Um, so I don't have a lot of real estate um, to, to have a tab in the middle pane. But you can see you've got all your tabs below here in the standard way you would have with the, uh, the network client. I could hyperlink here and go straight over to a ticket, for example. I'm going to go back up to the welcome screen. So there's some, again, there's these standard out-of-the-box ones. I'm going to click on uh, activity here. And this is one that has several custom uh, groupings that have been added to the system. So you can see tickets by status, for example. That's a chart here that shows my open, in process, and web, lead, uh, web tickets that have been recorded against my system. And I can get that in a graphical format. And again, it's very easy to create new ones of those. And they're based on a group. So if you see tickets by status, in the lower left-hand corner, we've got view group. I can click on that and just jump straight into that particular group. Maybe I want to work with those. I want to go through the open tickets and work through the list. But you can get straight to the underlying group that makes up that widget. And so that's how the basis of these different controls is. It's based on underlying groups. So just like in SalesLogix network client where you create a group, we can create a group in the, uh, in the web client. If I go back up to the account level, um, we might want to create a group of Western states. Uh, customers that are in Western states. 
I can add the group right here, right click, just like you would do in the standard client. And this view is very similar to what you're, if you've been working with groups in sales logic, it's going to have a very similar layout for you. So I'm going to go ahead and put Western uh, Customers West. And in my conditions, go out to the address table. Oops, that's the shipping ID. If you notice, that's the address table joined to shipping ID. I want the address table based off the address ID. And I'm going to pick uh, address, or uh, on the conditions, cancel that. I'm going to say state equal to Washington. I'm going to add state again equal to Oregon. And once more, state equal to, let me look again, California. <laughs> So now I've got a group, an account group, where the state is uh, Washington and Oregon and California, which of course is going to return no results. So I'm going to change these to ORs, make sure I get a good result. And I really don't care about the layout right now. I'm just going to say OK. And here we have uh, the 10 records that are the accounts that are in Washington, California, or Oregon. So nothing new there just created a group. So if I go up to the welcome and I go to this, uh, close this here, it keeps, I can right click and I can say, uh, I can create a new tab. Specific uh, things maybe related to tickets, maybe related to opportunities. In this case, I'm just going to add content to the current tab. So I'm going to say add content. And here's all the out of the box types of content I can add. Um, this is customizable. If you want some other type of widget, it could be created. But out of the box, you've got bar charts, column charts, uh, funnel charts, just a list of items from the group, uh, a line chart, uh, pie chart, you know, several different types of content that you can add. So in this case, let's go ahead and do a uh, pie chart here. And we'll go ahead and say West uh, Customers. Oh, I forgot to put customers on the criteria. It really doesn't matter in this database because there were so few anyway. So let's go ahead and just leave it. So I'm just going to say Western Accounts. And on the entity, account, I can pick any of the different entities that I might have created a group for. In the group, we'll find our new group that we just created. These are all the groups that you have access to, so we can pick any of those to be the underlying data for the control here. I believe it was Customers West, or Customer West right there. And what are we going to do the dimension on for our chart? Let's go ahead and do States. And I want to see a count of those. But I could do, there's a bunch of predefined, uh, you know, you could have revenue for the different states, you could have um, how long they've been a customer, different types. And for each entity, accounts, contacts, history, you'll have different types of metrics available um, out of the box. If, the, if one of those doesn't meet what you need, we are able to customize it. However, um, hopefully what's here out of the box gives you most of what you're going to need. But I can go ahead and I'm just going to say count. And I want to display the names of the, the state. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a legend for it. How many slices? Well, we know there's only going to be three states, but I'm going to pick ten just for just for fun. And a slice for other, which is kind of cool if you have, uh, let's say you're doing it by state and you want to have it be the top ten, uh, then that it'll have other as a slice. It'll be all the rest of them in, in there. So I'm going to say OK. And if we scroll down here, you can see it's created this Western Accounts. And the pie chart, we've got five in California representing half of those, three in Washington, and two in Oregon. That's and you can move this around. If you want to have this be up at the top, you bring that up. And again, because it's all based on a group and sales logic, I can just click on View Group then to get to the underlying records that make this up. Alternatively, you may want to have a group of things that, you know, um, go ahead and pick another. This is just going to be a group list. I'm going to use that same. I'm going to use Chicago this time. I know there's like 28 records in there. How many records do we want included in this? You know, because you might not want to see. You know, if you have a, 
let's say you're doing one by customers that haven't been con you know, sorted by length of time since they've been contacted or something like that. Well, you could get, that would have everybody in it, but you might only want to see the top 50 or something like that. Uh, so in this case, I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and put 100 and visible. Oh, looks like 50 is the limit on that. Say OK, and then it's just a list of that group basically. So here's that Chicago group. It basically just takes what was a group in sales logics and breaks it out here. So you can actually get a really cool workspace set up on here. Of you know, if your primary job is to log into sales logics. And if there's a ticket that's open that's assigned to you, it shows up. You could have a tab for that. You could have your activities for the day. You could have opportunities that are closing this month. You know, whatever is specific to your job function, you could have all those widgets here on the screen. Um, if you get a high resolution, you might be able to see you know five or six of those, um, and that really becomes your workspace that so you're able to log in and just start going to going to town on the the things that concern you. A lot of times we hear that in sales logic that there's just you know, there's thousands of accounts, there's all these contacts. How do I know where I'm supposed to go and what I'm supposed to do? And so this helps, you know, can help define you know your day in the life kind of of what you do in sales logic and and have it be you know easily accessible. 